Hey. Hello. Hi. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Christmas Eve Eve. Yeah, Christmas Eve Eve. Uh, we are, I'm Mindy, and I'm the pastor at Chapelwood Methodist Church, and... I'm David, I'm the pastor at Douglasville and Union Chapel United Methodist Churches. We are joined this evening by our youngest child, Ash, who uh, has been participating actively in every single devotion up until this point, but from the other side of the camera, so... Uh, and thank you. <laughs> well, we are now putting Ash in front of the camera. It's uh, weird being on this side. Yeah, so um, that it's weird being on this side. Yeah, that kind of actually is a little bit what our devotion's about tonight. Yeah. Cool. It's odd because um, it's taking the person who is expecting to be on the outside of the whole thing and, and bringing them in and making them a part of it. So, ha ha! See what I did there? Looks easy, but it's not. <laughs> so we're going to start our devotion uh, this evening by singing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. <clears throat> Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile here, until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Shall come to thee, O Israel. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So our reading this evening comes from the book of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, and it starts in verse 18. <clears throat> now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. So yesterday we talked a little bit about the, uh, the visitation of Gabriel to Mary and how that would have affected her as a young girl in this time. A young unmarried woman um, suddenly being with child is, is pretty much the worst situation that a, uh, uh, that a young girl is, uh, in Israel can find themselves in. And um, Joseph, who was a good man, was going to dismiss her quietly rather than bring on the shame of, of everybody's making, you know, suppositions about what happened here uh, about her. And the angel tells him not to be afraid. Don't be afraid. The child that's within her is, is born of the Holy Spirit, and it is Jesus, and it will save mankind from all their sins. And Joseph heard this and obeyed, which is the second uh, act of faith in this story that is tremendous, you know, act of faith. So um, when I was talking earlier about how we're bringing somebody from outside the story in and making them a, a, an integral part of the story, <coughs> we've been tracing the Jesse tree. Uh, we started with Adam and Eve and we came through Jesse, but this is Joseph, son of David. This is the, uh, this is the, you know, the house of David. This is the child being born to the house of David. And uh, the idea that Joseph was an afterthought uh, I don't. I don't think that's possible. No, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, I mean, people think about. I was like, well, you know, the whole line of David thing can can it be because Jesus wasn't Joseph's son, and to the rest of the world, he was. Well, and Mary was also of the house of David. Yeah. So it, that whole community was, you know, uh, the. And you have to remember, like, how many generations it was from David. So this wasn't like, you know, close relationships. Of the house of David being married, there were so many steps removed. But I don't think that that God looked at Mary and said, "Okay, that's that's the chosen you know girl to bear this Jesus." And oh yeah, he's 
she's betrothed to Joseph, so I guess we'll take him too. I think actually Joseph was also chosen. I think Joseph mm -hmm. was chosen to be the man who was supposed to raise Jesus. Just like uh, Mary had enough grace to say, this is going to happen. Okay, how is it going to happen? Okay, you know, it shall be as you say. Joseph, as soon as he found out, he did not make a big scene, didn't make any scandal, didn't publicly shame. He just said, okay, we're going to do this quietly. And he also gets a visitation from an angel and says, okay. You're part of this story. Yeah. You, you're, you're a part of this. You're a part of this. So, um, I don't know, what do you think? I don't know. Um, I do appreciate the image of an angel coming down and being like, hey, it's okay that you don't know what's going on. But it's always really funny to me when in the Bible they mention an angel came down and was like, be not afraid. Because a lot of people picture angels being like these angelic, human-like, you know, golden locks of hair and... But they're like kind of terrifying. I would imagine <laughs> seven eyes and like be not afraid. Really, that's kind of hard. Yeah. What in, even what you just said, you envision this angelic image. That's that's such an indelible thing that we we see this you know spread wings, flowing white, so, you know, graceful look. So and if you follow that actually, part it's of the more story, like, you know, like yeah. if you follow that part of the story, then you have Joseph just you know quietly minding his own business, being like, oh okay, well this is complicated, so this marriage is not going to work out. I will just uh, you know no big deal, and then having this dream where Gabriel is like, <laughs> be not afraid. <laughs> yeah. Time Whatever you say, boss, you're in you're in charge. Yeah. You know, so um, I guess that. You kind of have to be in charge. I'm not going to question you. <laughs> yes, exactly. But I also think Joseph was probably, you know, a, a, a man of great faith. I'm sure. Otherwise, he would not have been chosen to be betrothed to Mary. And also, he had to have been because she would have been like, I'm pregnant. And, and uh, God has, you know, he would have been like, excuse me? Yeah, exactly. But because he was a man of faith, he's like, okay, yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, gotcha. exactly. So um, what we have here is kind of the bringing together of a formula that will create, you know, this this world in which Jesus grows up. And I can't help but think that Joseph, as a carpenter, has an influence on, you know, uh, some kind of influence on the way that, you know, Jesus is presented to the world. Because he's not a priest. Mm -hmm. And he's not a king. And he's not a beggar. He's not a leper. He's, you could also, you could he's also. right there in the middle. He's right in the, that working class, work tradesman, you know, class of people. You could almost say he uh, built his reputation. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so our, our ornament for today <laughs> is a uh, how's, yeah a set of carpentry tools, um, sort of in honor of Joseph. Fitting. Um, abstracty kind of carpentry tools, granted, because I don't know how to draw carpentry tools. <laughs> so we're going to put this pretty close to the top of the tree because we we're, we're, we're kind of we're getting to the that's not as branch. Yeah. Later, we're going to put that pretty close <laughs> to the top of the tree and um, in honor of Joseph. And you know, we have a devotion tomorrow night that will be kind of early because right. we both have services. So if you're looking for some place to go to a Christmas Eve service, David will be leading a service at... At Douglasville United Methodist Church, and that will be at 5.30. Uh, we will be, you know, masking and distancing, and we will live stream it. And the same is true at Mindy's Church. I'll be having my service at 7, and that will be at Chapelwood here in Nash, Texas. Uh, so we will probably be doing our devotion for tomorrow at about 4. Right. So uh, feel free to tune in and join us then, and uh, hopefully we'll see you there. Hopefully. hopefully. All right. Uh, we're going to pray our prayer together. God of power and mercy, open our hearts and welcome. Remove the things that hinder us from receiving Christ with joy, so that we may share his wisdom and become one with him when he comes in glory. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. All right. God bless you. Thanks very much for joining us. Go ahead, you get this finally. Well, in our, our faces. <laughs> Revenge. It's not going to work. Gonna I'm going to get this. You're going to get this. Okay. Right. Wait, that was a long work. God bless. <laughs>